do crazy shit. Like, do wacky shit. Do things that, like, you will fail at. Be okay failing. But, like, t- just try and hit the Grand Slam. You know what I mean? Like, really go for it. Because this is the safest place to do it. The only other place I've felt this safe as I was at AFI is in the Plainville writer's room where sort of like based out of my missing the being in grad school and like not having to worry about a job, I like created this thing that we did crazy idea hour and every Friday we would take an hour out of the day and everybody could pitch anything. Like our support staff, everyone could just, you could pitch anything. It didn't have to be about, it could be about a character, it could be about a mood, it could be about anything. And one of the writers who was my number two on the show pitched like a Moulin Rouge dance sequence um, in like the first week that we were just like hard no. Um, but she kept pitching it, which is also like rule number one in a writer's room is not to repitch <laughs> once it's been no. And but like she didn't pitch it the same way. She would be like, so it's not Moulin Rouge, it's this. And like every week she kept coming back for 20 weeks and doing this over and over and over again. And it like, by the time it got to the end of 20 weeks, I actually was like really bummed to be saying no because it was just this like very weird thing and we couldn't figure out where to put it. And then the room ended and I was moving and I was driving from, I moved like a mile away from my old house. So I was like driving back and forth and I was listening to the soundtrack and uh, that I'd made for the room and this Teenage Dirtbag cover came on and I was listening to it while having just like three days earlier had this conversation and it clicked for me at like how to do it. And it was this like completely batshit crazy thing that she pitched 20 weeks ago that made no sense in a show about teen suicide and mental health. And it worked. And like then it became this sort of like showpiece at the end of episode seven that like really culminated almost everything for Michelle's arc in the present day. And there is no way that that would have happened had we had this fear of failure in the room. Like had this... you be fear of being stupid fear of saying the wrong thing and like outside of that truly this is the place to do that and like find like-minded people who will tell you like that's super fucking crazy but like sure let's go down that journey what happens when we start pulling at that thread what happens when we start doing this because this is the place to do it i can point to the exact moment why I think I'm standing here, and it's because I have the dude I met on the first day here. That friendship with with Max and with Derek, that was like, that became everything to me. And, and I don't know if there's anything close to it anymore that you guys do in the first year, but we had uh, Gil Dennis was one of our was one of the instructors, and the, the first month you're here, um, you would do this class where it's uh, your first cycle team. It's like the producer, writer, and director of your first cycle team. And there's 12 of us with Gil. And you go through uh, like your, your greatest moment of fear, greatest moment of joy, greatest moment of shame. And it's like it's basically like a group therapy class. I feel like all I did was just it opens up like a part of yourself that you that is so guarded. And working with Max, like it immediately established this like this weird connection we had between our our, our weird dark joy, fear, shame. Uh, parts of ourselves so that we can communicate in a way where it's just like I, I communicate with him like my, my own brother. Nothing is off the table. The movie came, was, was born out of that friendship and, and that movie opened up all the other doors. My first day on set of The Brother's Son was my f- first day on set since my cycle two. <laughs> and... <laughs> And you know, I don't know if you guys, are, you don't know yet. In Cycle Films, the writers, not, I was just, I was literally, a, I think, a grip for my Cycle 2 film. <laughs> and so they, people were showing up and asking me questions. And I would literally be like, oh, okay. And I'm like looking around. And I, the rest of the day was just a blur. But I, like, it, so much of it is trusting the people around you. Like Brad made sure that I had a support system around me. Like he was there. Like we have, you know, uh, our producing directors done so much television. We our line producers done so much television. Like, and it, for me, it was just all right. I trust Brad. I trust the people that we've hired, and I'm gonna trust them to carry my useless butt through most of this production until I can get my feet under me. 
and that's been like that was so much of it just tr- you because you, you, if you immediately don't trust people nobody's gonna trust anybody so you gotta put your trust in people so trust that they will help you and they will trust that you will eventually learn to do things